Hey guys, welcome back. I uh, got another episode with Early Age Yomi in Ringworld. It's turn 53. If you recall in the last episode, we had had um, a few big battles with uh, with Lanka and with Rus. I mean, with uh, Abyssia and Rus. And uh, while we have both taken damage, uh, all sides involved, uh, Abyssia and Rus have taken more damage or they do not have as deep of a bench as we do. So we've kind of done critical damage, and now uh, Lanka and I are pushing really hard at infrastructure. Message from Agartha. No need to worry, I'm just sending reinforcements down to Caleb Niflheim. Uh, I don't think I showed you this in the last episode, but I had sent a message basically saying, Hey, you've got an enormous amount of troops on our border. Um, okay, we finished researching Alteration uh, 8, and now we're headed for 9. Alt 9 is going to be big for us. We have Shock Resistance and our Bless. Uh, being able to drop iron of <coughs> armies of iron is going to be a big deal for us. It's going to be less good against nations with really good air access, but anyway. Um, okay, we cast uh, Summon Shikome, we cast Voice of Apsu. Did we find anything? No. Let's get down to the battles. These are all magic face attacks, and most of these are Lanka. Um, let's go watch. I think what we're really seeing now is Lanka's like really turning up the heat with uh, magic face rating, and uh, it's something Lanka can do as well as any nation really. These, I mean, these guys are some of the better air rating thugs in the game. I mean, you could argue that Vanjarls are better, but Okay, success number one. And this is deep rating, so this is a Dakini. I don't think we've really seen Dakini yet. Uh, this used to be one of the main reasons to play Lanka. Uh, they are so good. Um, let me talk about them for a bit. They used to be, I think, like 50-something Blood Slaves, and now they're like 80, I think 88. <clears throat> so they get an enormous price increase. Uh, but that said, they're definitely still worth getting. I think the price increase was completely appropriate. Um, yeah, they're really good. <laughs> the So Air 3, they can Cloud Trapeze all over the place. They make really, really strong Air Mages if you need to throw Storm up. They can do Fog Warriors even. Um, these guys are really, really good as like Spellcasters and an army. Uh, with Blood 3, you can do high-powered blood stuff rather easily, like they can do Rush of Strength, um, Reign of Blood. There's a bunch of things they can do with both of those paths. Uh, the Death is a little incidental. You don't really end up using the Death that much. Um, you can basically throw on Skeletal Body. Um, I'm not sure how else you would use the Death, but anyway, uh, very good. Their stat line, as you see, is pretty damn solid. There's no items on them. Um, does she have Chaos Power? Uh, this must be neutral scales, because I don't see any Chaos Power buff. Um, yeah, so this is neutral. If she was in Chaos 3, she would be plus 3 attack, plus 3 defense. So very good base stat line. Uh, magic resistance is fine. Uh, she comes with an, uh, a Thame, which is a life-draining weapon, uh, which is kind of the same as the Asrapas which are the, basically the, the unit form of this, not the commander. Uh, she has a kick built in, which is nice. It will go up with her strength. Um, she has a skull necklace, which is interesting because it does head and body protection. It's one of the few things that does that. So um, I think this takes the body slot for armor, but I can't remember. So I think if you put... But I could be wrong. and I'd have to check. I, I know it, it it takes either the head or body slot, so if you put an armor on, I th if it takes the body slot, then if you put an armor on, it will override this and you'll lose the head armor too. Um, anyway, that's kind of how that works. Um, but yeah, with the vine shield, they're still going to get to keep their athame, and then they can go kind of ham. Um, they also have damage reversal, which is really important. This is basically, this is different than Blood Vengeance which is going to do, uh, basically, if I take damage, then you take damage. This is, uh, if you fail an MR check versus 12, then you take damage and I don't take damage. 
Um, so this is actually another form of damage mitigation. So it's really good. Um, and the, one of the reasons they're, these guys make pretty good thugs is that uh, this will get them above their... This light drain attack will get them above their base HP pool. Um, <clears throat> and there's a few things you can do to kind of uh, exploit that a little. Uh, one would be doing... Probably the easiest one, and it's a really good item I think on this chassis, is the uh, Amulet of Growth, which is going to kick them up to size 4. It's going to increase their strength and their HP pool. Um, increasing the strength is going to increase the amount of lifesteal that they do, and that's going to basically further go to giving them more lifesteal, which is going to go to increase their effective kind of max HP. Because after they life drain some, they'll go to a higher max HP. And so we'll see how that works here. Oh, well, maybe. I'm not sure if we'll see. This might not be enough troops. Okay, we're not... Okay, they were at 25. She was kind of taking, I think, about as much damage as she was dishing out, but... You can see we're up to 29 now. Which is higher. I forget what it caps at. I think it's like, you can get 50% more HP than your base. But if you increase the base through something like uh, Enlarge, then you can get more, uh, even more, I believe, uh, on top of that. Okay, so that was that one. Now, this is a little risky, what Lanka is doing, because um, we're worried about assassins with Holy Scourges. So, um, assuming these guys have Earth Access, they should have Hammers, and they should have... Uh, three gem uh, holy scourges and just sprinkling like just base whatever shitty commander you want um, throughout your provinces would be basically complete raid deterrence so if you have 10 provinces uh, you spend 30 fire gems and like whatever gold you need to get a few commanders and like a good abyssian chassis with, like, this guy. This guy with uh, a Holy Scourge would have a very good chance at killing one of these thugs. Um, <clears throat> so. Maybe not with the Horde of Dead. Uh, yeah. Horde of Skeletons, excuse me. Maybe not with that. I think, what is he gonna do? He just got fatigued himself out, and that was, like, pretty damn lucky. I guess if people closed in combat, he would get some reinvigoration from Soul Vortex, but it's not probably a great script. Um, yeah, because, I mean, uh, you would probably be able to kill these skeletons before they would do much damage to you, if you, especially if you had a little bit of PD. And then, yeah, this guy would... Uh, smack the shit out of him. Um... Okay, whoops, real battle here. <laughs> Wait, did I? Oh shit, these weren't no, these weren't magic phase at all. Okay, those were just normal move attacks. I was thinking they were magic phase. Okay, so here we go. We've got some fall bears, which I think uh, Lanka won over to his side. <clears throat> versus some more bears over here. And this is, I think, what was left of that Rusian army from the last episode. Okay, and we've got darkness down. Um, the devils are in amongst us. Uh, but we have... Okay, we've got leech spam going out, which is pretty good at dealing with uh, raiders jumping into the back. Like, if, if you have leech scripted and they send flyers into your back line, uh, you will very quickly blow them up, as you can see happening here. Okay, now, uh, I wasn't necessarily following all of that. Howling, winds, wailing, okay. 
charm animal. So all these bears are quickly getting converted. It's one of the things, high nature actually gets really strong um, in the late game. When you can start spamming charm, charm is one of the better spells in the game. It's significantly better in my opinion than Enslaved Mind. Uh, you need kind of high nature to cast it, but it's really good. Okay, so anyway, he wins that. So this was just kind of a massacre. He gained seven bears for trading in some chaff. It cost him a fair amount of gems, though. Okay, uh, we have a battle here in the Fortress of Skull, and I think I'm sending a Dione in, if I recall. Well, I'm moving the army elsewhere. So this is a little risky. Okay, have we blessed yet? We haven't blessed. We did Iron Skin first, so we're at Protection 29. The idea is this guy is supposed to be able to survive Devils. I'm not sure if we're there. Kind of risky, we need to bless. I think Devils probably would have killed him. We got a bless, buddy. Oh, look at that. The last second blessing. So what's happening for those of you who <clears throat> aren't necessarily familiar with the minions mechanics is um, when you're being attacked, there's a chance that the attack will interrupt, will basically make you retaliate rather than cast a spell. And so that's basically what was happening. So because I was surrounded, I was getting attacked and I didn't go on script and cast spells. Um, I was just sitting there uh, attacking but hopefully now I'll be able to run through my... Whoa, 15, that was a lot of damage. I'll be able to run through my script. Now, uh, we have pretty high fire resistance. 25, right? So all these guys' attacks is pure fire. Well, let's click one of the big ones. So it's going to get basically completely negated. It's going to be very, very, very hard for these guys to damage me. I don't, they had some huge exploding die to get up that high because... <clears throat> like, if you're doing... Uh, where's the biggest one? 21 damage, that's going to have to go through 25, so now it's at minus 4. So you need 4 out of a out of a dice to do anything, uh, to just get past fire resistance. And then once you get past fire resistance, then you have to get through half of my protection, which is like 15. So you're at like minus 4 trying to get to 15, uh, to, 15 to do any damage. So needless to say, you need to get extremely lucky. So that's why, we, even though we got down to 2 HP, once we got Blessing off, just the odds are we're going to be right back up to full HP. Now we may at some point throw out Legions of Steel. I think it's like on hit. Uh, it'll interrupt casting. Um, and this is one of the reasons it's really hard to take Abyssian Force a lot of times, because they can just have their guys back here throw out uh, Fire Elementals. I think we got Enrage cast on us, too. Yeah. So, uh, I think that means that... Oh, no. We can still route, I guess. I'll just speed it up here. Because this is obviously going to be a little grindy. There goes Soul Vortex. Uh, I don't think the... Are these guys lifeless? Yeah, they are. It's not going to help us. I don't know if we got legions of steel off. I don't think so. Now, one of the things you'll notice, he's turning... Oh, he is routed. Okay. Looks like I'm going to run off first. So, uh, I think that was actually not a, success, uh, not a success. We failed to capture the fortress, but um, we caused a bunch of his guys to retreat during the battle, including his pretender. I didn't actually realize at the time that was his pretender. Uh, let's take a look. So when the battle times out and you retreat in a fortress battle, it is very bad news for you. You're dead. Um, here's his pretender. 
So, yeah, this is where all the skeletons came from. And this was probably the guy that summoned most of the fire elementals as well. So he lost his gear also. Uh, Golden Arbalist? Let's see what he does with that, actually. You would think... That's probably what did the 15 damage. Golden Arbalist, as you can see, it shoots two projectiles. Um, ammunition 12. That so far just went after the wolves. Is this guy out of ammunition already? Oh wait, no, I heard fire shots fired. Okay, here he is. Yeah, he's not really in range, ideal range. <clears throat> yeah, his well, no, his precision is 21. He's probably pretty close to ideal range. Yeah, okay, the the damage being done, I was like, how is it doing damage when these... Because we went through the math, it would be, they'd have to get some huge exploding die roll to get any damage through. But uh, it's from this. But I think he's done now. Does he just run off the battlefield? No, I think after he ran out of ammunition, he just ran to be behind some troops. So the skeletons get summoned, and he stays behind them. More skeletons get summoned, he stays behind them. Yeah. So he ran out of ammunition. Honestly, he should have just had a Just Man's Cross, which is what you would use to kill demons. It would have been a lot better, and it wouldn't have run out of ammo, because it's kind of a bug in the game. Uh, okay, Lanka gets attacked by a ghost. I think Ghost versus Fat Raven of Underworld. Probably not going to go in the ghost's favor. 580 HP. Let's see how close he gets. Yeah, okay. Ghost is like, yeah, maybe I'll come back later. Okay, and then... Here we go. Now, Tylus, we moved him, we snuck him uh, into a province that was being blood hunted. And that meant it was also being patrolled. And so we said, uh, hello, blood hunters. What y'all doing over here? And Soul Vortex. If you put up Soul Vortex and you go from 50 HP to. Uh, or from 70 HP to 108, you're like, ah, feels good. That was very refreshing. <clears throat> he also has uh, an Athame, so he's going to be doing uh, life stealing damage. Let's ask a question Could this guy survive a uh, Holy Scourge Assassin? I think the answer is probably yes. So we've got the Faithful, so we've got luck going for us. Uh, we've got reasonably high protection. Um, we also, if they're fighting us in battle, we've got Protective Force, which is going to help a lot, and we've got Temper Flesh. Both both of those things are going to help a lot for us Holy Scourges, so it might not one-hit us. Um, we've got uh, two attacks rather than an attack and a shield, uh, which is also going to help, because we'll be doing a lot of damage very quickly. Um, and then, if you are stealthy, um, you are not able to get targeted by assassins. So that's why we have the Shade, ma shade Mail Hallmark on him, is because we can just move him to another province. Um, and like you saw... Where was he? Right here. Um, if we move them to a province that's being blood hunted, then we're perfectly safe. Now, um, this province also has a lab, so we can Cloud Trap these out, so in this case we're Cloud Trap using to 280, um, which is, I think, Abyssia's capital. So it's like, hey dude, what's up? We're on your capital now, because we happened to raid into a province with a lab. Bet you're not expecting that, huh? Um, and we also obviously are on top of this big fat fort, uh, and we're going to be storming the castle with uh, the full army, basically. 
We've got... Oh, shit. This is not going to go well, guys. We've got End of Weakness scripted. I can't change this script. This turns in the past. So we've got End of Weakness. Um, we do have Mass Flight. Uh, and Divine Blessing. <laughs> We're bringing a ton of stuff. So it's possible it might not matter, but look, this... Which is basically going to... It's like Mass Protection. You do not want this when you're fighting Abyssia. Bad idea. Bad idea. Okay. Then we're doing more raiding of our own. We're sending Kenichi out this way. We're sending Jojek out this way. Let's look. How um, assassin resistant are we? We're slightly assassin resistant. We have the wolves. Uh, we have two weapons and we have luck. Uh, and we have a stone bird. This guy's pretty assassin resistant. Uh, Jojek, pretty assassin resistant. We don't have luck, though. Um, we do have very, very high defense. Um, so that is going to help a lot in conjunction with the wolves, with assassins. So I would say he's fairly assassin resistant. No, he does have luck. We have faithful. Okay. So Jojek is also looking pretty sharp. Um, this guy's just going to spelly spam the shit out of you, and he has Ring of Returning. He's probably fine. Um... These two guys would obviously die to assassins. The key, this is not an assassin-resistant Dione. Uh, he will just die if he gets targeted by one. Um, and then here, this Daitengu is pretty assassin-resistant. He's got a lantern shield, uh, which is going to give me three corpse candles, which are freaking annoying. They have like 20 defense, so they're very tricky to, to kill if you don't have a brand, which of course uh, an assassin wouldn't. That are not the kind of assassin we're worried about. Um, and then uh, he has some decent gear and, you know, at least a decent weapon and a pretty good stat line. I think he could make it, but I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, I feel kind of comfortable, but we'll see. Um, we are going to be storming this castle again. I think we're going to be doing it with kind of an army rather than just sending in... Who was the one who went in and fought here? It was a Jojek. So Jojek, um, I guess he's out here, yeah. So Jojek is going to go back to raiding and pillaging. Uh, we're going to send an army in to take this castle, and we're going to be moving troops further this way. So I don't know, I don't think there's really much armies left defending this planet. I think we've made it past them. Any armies that are left are probably inside this fort. Um... Now, he can, in a normal war, he would be able to kind of uh, recruit armies and then rebuild them and come attack them, or like come back and attack us. Um, Lanka and I have different plans though, and that is that we are going to raid very, very quickly. Like, Lanka is going to just blow up this planet, and I'm going to do my best. Um, like, you can see he's already blown up this planet, basically. We look at all the stuff Lanka's taken, like, he's been raiding super hard. And he's got both of the forts pinned in. Now, let's ask the question, is Lanka's stuff assassin resistant? Um, Axe of Hate is very good anti-thug. I would say the short answer is no. Um, yeah. The thing is, uh, Dione are going to get... The wolves in an assassination, which will help a lot. Um, Lanka is not going to get them. And then these guys, I mean, are, are they're basically guaranteed to die in one hit. Like with the gear they have. There's no luck or anything. Like the first time somebody comes up and smacks them, uh, like, yeah, they'll just die. So that is a risk doing all this down on Lanka's stuff. And I, I mean, I have like a little bit of PTSD about attacking Lunk and, I mean, uh, Abyssian forts. Uh, because Abyssian assassins can be so nasty. Uh, but so far, it hasn't been justified. We haven't had any, uh, there hasn't been any mass assassinating of my dudes. But uh, we don't have to worry about flames from the sky as much because we have two forms on our uh, Kowoni which is one of the PTSD items, like on the Abyssian checklist. But uh, assassins are definitely still there. So, uh, but we can see there were none. Okay, um, 
I think that's about it for this turn. Um, basically, all we're doing... Um, I mean, we're just forging a ton of stuff here. I can't remember. Let's see which of our recruitment centers are turned on. So we're recruiting here. And we're recruiting here. And the guys we're getting... I want to show you my little Onishugo logistics... Uh, we're putting a robe of missile protection and then any kind of boots that we have, like boots of the messenger, boots of quickness, any kind we have. Um, and with that, these Oni Shugo, let's take these off real quick. So he can move all the way to here, three provinces away. If we take them off, his map move is 10. He can't even move two provinces away, right? Take him literally like five turns to get up here, right? So. Um, dealing with your shitty armor and uh, putting in some, some movement boots is going to go a long way to letting these guys move across the map. And it's going to matter because the longer these guys take, the more mage turns you're wasting. And they're also going to summon Oni uh, as they go and cause unrest wherever they are. You just, you really just want, you know, get them where they're going quickly. So that is what we're doing here. One way to think about it, now this map is has a lot of choke points, so it's like more this way where we move them towards some like exit destination and then from the exit destination uh, they go attack. But even on like a normal map, um, you would probably want to move them to a province on one of your borders that has a lab, at which point you can take off some of the movement gear uh, and then they can kind of join the, the main part of your army if you have a big empire. So uh, that's what we're doing here, but we're just moving them to an Oni pit. Um, I think, yeah, this this Oni production is uh, shut down. One thing we're going to be doing kind of soon, we haven't done it yet, but we'll see when we do it. At some point, I'm gonna destroy this fort in, in Yomi. We're gonna upgrade. We've got um, basically just like a normal, most basic, uh, not a palisade, but like the one above that, a fort, I guess is what you would call it. And uh, we're going to be getting the three red seconds version. It's gonna increase our income a fair amount, and it's also gonna get get us 50% more Dione. Uh, so that is something that is in the cards for us. It's something you can do as Yomi, but we're gonna have Lanka do it for us. Uh, Cause you do have to get pretty high in blood and we're not there yet. Um. Are we still getting more? Yeah, we're getting more dudes here. This war with uh, Abyssia has been kind of profitable. Um, it's opened up a bit more income for me. Um, I think, yeah. Got some raiding done where we can trace income, but the Abyssian land so far seemed kind of poor. So we'll see, after we take this, well, no, we've got a ton of unrest. That's kind of the thing too, is after we conquer stuff, it's a while before it gives us income. Because like the armies we have to conquer it just give us so much unrest. So I think that's it with this turn. Let's go ahead and pull up the next turn, which is going to be turn uh, 54. I know this is normally long. I wouldn't really start a new turn in 28 minutes, but we are going to do that. Whoops. We are not playing Ulm. Oh, I'm missing turn 54. Uh, in that case, I think we'll call it an episode. See you next time.